Hi, my name is David Borish. I'm the director of Heard Inuit Voices on Caribou, which is an Inuit-led documentary film and research project about the relationship between Inuit and caribou in the Nunatsiavut and Nunatubut regions of Labrador, Canada, all in the context of a 99% decline in caribou populations and a total hunting ban that's been in place since 2013. Developed over five years, this initiative explores a diversity of lived experiences with the caribou declines, including the impacts on Inuit culture, food security, mental health, and a variety of other dimensions of their lives. This film work as a storytelling output is really at the heart of this initiative, but equally important was the process, the behind the scenes of creating a community-led, research-based documentary film. But what does that actually mean? This was not a project where a big production company came in with an idea. It was an initiative that Inuit were leading from the start. In the context of the caribou population declines and total hunting ban, Inuit communities across Labrador voiced a need to document Inuit knowledge about their relationship with caribou and to do so through both Inuit-led film and research so that Inuit voices could be communicated and shared in different ways. A Caribou Project Steering Committee was formed, which included Inuit community members, representatives from the Nunatsiavu government, the Nunatuvu Community Council, the Torngat Wildlife, Plants and Fisheries Secretariat, and researchers from across Canada. And this committee was leading all aspects of this work, from the ethics processes, the study design, data collection, story development, and the overall management of the film. When it came to the actual filming, we had two main focuses people and caribou, and both required community input and direction while filming. When filming caribou, one of the ways that we traveled out onto the land was by skidoo with Inuit knowledge holders, such as Theodore Ward from Cartwright Nunatuvi. He knew the land better than anyone and helped us get a whole bunch of different footage. Not all of which was usable. To find the caribou, we first needed to find their tracks, but they aren't the only animals around. We came across some really big tracks, and when we followed them, they led us to a torn up seal, polar bear. But we kept searching, and after about half a day, we finally came across some fresh caribou tracks, which led us to more tracks, and eventually we came across what we were out to see. Another way that we filmed caribou was by helicopter when we traveled to Northern Labrador. This was also a collective effort going with Henry Lyle, an elder, knowledge holder, and Torngat Wildlife Co-Management Board member, Aaron Dale, a policy analyst at the Torngat Wildlife Plants and Fisheries Secretariat, and Eldred Allen, an Inuk drone pilot from Rigolet Nunatsiavu. This was an incredible experience and a whole other way of documenting the herds. We did get a chance to get right up close to a group of George River caribou, and although it was just a small glimpse into what this herd once looked like, it was still an incredible experience to interact with these animals in this way. As many Inuit describe, they really were magical. And it wasn't only caribou that we saw on this excursion. Hey, a wolf! wolf, wolf. We got a wolf here, Tim, coming towards the herd again. Yeah, I got a little Filming these shots of caribou would not have been possible without Inuit community members and our team collaborating together for this film work. When it came to filming people, it was also really important that there was community direction in this process. So the video interviews were co-conducted between myself and Ina Shaiwa, an Inuk community researcher from Rigolet Nunatsiavu. Together, we spoke with more than 80 people in 11 different communities across Labrador. I think there's always been an interest to talk about caribou, and this is when the ban sort of happened. It gave people that little push to say, okay, we need to actually document this thing, and this is what connects us to our culture, our family, and our need of being on the land. It helps. Being able to record the people with video and with uh, recording their voice, we're actually recording the story and it's there for the next generations and nothing gets mixed up or nothing gets added to the story sort of thing. Like we have the actual proof or we have the actual 
knowledge, you know, that uh, can be passed on to another generation. My hope, I, I think it's so that people will understand where we're coming from. It's just like, just listen to us. We know. So we had Inuit leadership with the steering committee as well as in the filmmaking process. But for this film to be of actual value for communities, we needed to make sure that we were hearing directly from participants themselves. And so a critical part of this co-creation process was to organize knowledge sharing events where we could show some of the visuals and the quotes and hear direct feedback from people. We also shared draft versions of the film throughout the post-production process, which was really helpful to get an idea about how people felt about the work. At the end of the day, we wanted this film to do justice to the story of Inuit and caribou in Labrador, and that would not have been possible without direct leadership from Inuit community members. If you're curious to learn more about our co-creation process, check out a link below for a paper that we wrote all about our collective experience. Okay, so that's a glimpse into the community-led aspects of this project, but Herd is also a research-based documentary film. What does that mean? Well, when we first started this project, we knew that there were two types of objectives that we were trying to meet. Storytelling objectives in the form of documentary films, as well as research objectives in the form of research articles. And this research component was really important in part to support decision-making processes for Inuit partners, but also as another way of sharing Inuit voices about the decline in caribou populations. And before going into this work, we recognized that there were a lot of synergies between qualitative research and documentary filmmaking. And so our approach was to try to blend the two together. As an example, in the film, you'll hear longtime caribou hunter Joey Agnetok say, It was almost like the caribou was the reason and everything else happened after. This quote was not only used in the film. It was the title of a research article published in Global Environmental Change that explored the effects of the caribou declines on Inuit well-being. This article is filled with quotes from Inuit participants that we video interviewed, which meant that we were using the knowledge shared in the video interviews not only as content for the film, but also as qualitative data to be analyzed, explored, and written about all in collaboration with Inuit partners. But to take a step back, before we started this project, there wasn't really a technique or an approach that we were aware of that would allow us to work on video editing and a qualitative analysis at the same time. And so we developed our own technique that we call a video-based qualitative analysis. In a nutshell, instead of integrating video into pre-existing qualitative analysis softwares, our approach was the reverse integrating qualitative analysis strategies into video editing software, specifically Final Cut Pro X and the Lumberjack Builder program. By repurposing these video editing programs, we were able to connect interview transcripts directly to video interviews and apply codes to these video interviews representing different themes, such as culture and food security. This allowed us to listen, watch, and read the data all at the same time, which was really important for exploring Inuit knowledge. We were also able to use the coding and filtering tools that already exist within these programs to search and filter through these themes. And it was really cool because we could explore different relationships between these themes, such as quotes that talked about both culture and food security in the same answer to a question. So by using this approach, we were able to explore different themes in depth for our analysis, while also building out storylines and scenes based on these themes. We developed an entire step-by-step -step guide for other researchers, filmmakers, and communities who also want to create both storytelling and analytical outputs from the same process. So check out the link below for more information. So as a whole, Inuit Voices on Caribou is a story of Inuit and their deep connection to an animal. But there's also a story behind the film, the behind the scenes of creating a community-led, research-based documentary film. This project has shown us the opportunities for co-producing knowledge and stories through reciprocal partnerships and how important it is to create space for Inuit voices. It has also shown us that documentary film offers something different to a research initiative, as we were able to involve participants in ways that were accessible and visualize their knowledge in ways that otherwise might not be represented in text. We're so excited for you to watch the film and learn more about this project. Make sure to follow along at Inuit Voices Heard on our socials and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.